Rogers with Livingston and Ted Jellard too. And our host, Fitz and Lando, and he brings it to you. <laughs> creature features and all creatures. As we progress to the later stages of our younger years, we're all taught about the birds and the bees. And it is the latter half of that equation I wish to dwell upon for a quick moment. Bees are some of the most amazing creatures on God's green earth. Our friend the honeybee is a familiar creature to all nature lovers. Through its dedicated collection of pollen from a variety of flora, it creates the golden nectar we call honey, which we dip our biscuits into and utilize to sweeten our tea. The glorious bumblebee is the friendly koala bear of the bee world that helps farmers across the planet pollinate their crops. Also amongst the flying army of beneficial pollinators would be the squash bee, the mason bee, and the lovely blueberry bees. And then there's the bloody wasp. This vile beast's only purpose in life is to bring about trouble. This angry little bloke produces no honey, it pollinates nothing, and seems to have little other purpose in life than to bite us, sting us, or to do both simultaneously. This hideous creature can make the bravest amongst us shriek like a schoolgirl, and this is the precise topic of tonight's film. Welcome to Creature Features! The lovely and loquacious lass to this side would be my coquettish cohabitant, Tangella. The strapping young sportsman to this side is my benevolent butler, Mr. Livingston, and I am your amateur apicologist, not to mention host of this program, Vincent Van Dahl. Have we a splendid evening in store for you? First up on the itinerary, we'll be showing 1959's The Wasp Woman, a terrifying tale that revolves around a woman who is a wasp. <laughs> what? This is the first time in many weeks that you've correctly announced the film. Well, it's a far toss for my culpability if the producers have utterly failed to adequately prepare me with accurate materials. And Tangella says this is the first time in weeks you haven't left a girly magazine in the East Wing lavatory. I certainly would not do anything of the kind, and... And, oh, never mind. Right. Back to my diatribe. As we're watching the wasp woman buzz her way into our hearts and minds, and possibly into our digestive cavity, we'll be joined by the wonderful Dennis Lancaster. He's a talented costume and puppet maker, artist, and expert on monster movies, which is someone we could certainly utilize on this program. He'll chime in on tonight's film and have a few surprises that our San Francisco Bay Area friends might appreciate. So don't go away, because it's going to be another night of buzzingly honey-coated fright right here on Creature Features. I do not look at girly magazines. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome to Creature Features. It's that time of the week, your favorite time of the week, my favorite time of the week, and Mr. Dennis Lancaster's favorite time of the week. <laughs> this man is amazing. You should see, and you're going to see, the wonderful things he's created. How do I describe you? As like an artist, a, a puppet maker, a costume Actually, maker? I'm now considered a mascot maker and a puppet maker. A mascot maker. Well, you know, you, you go well beyond the whole football mascot thing. I well, think. I've done a lot of sports teams, a lot of school mascots. No, but uh, your skill level is like... It's... 
He's good. It's pretty you good. You should <laughs> see what he's brought. <laughs> it's you pretty good. You should see what he's brought. And they last. That's the one, my claim to fame. I've got mascots out there that have been working imagine, 20 years, 30 I years. A football mascot costume must get torn up a bit, right? They usually last around seven years. I mean, they get tackled. Oh, they get beat up. Um, beat up. I built, they get the thing dumped on their heads. Oh, that all the time. When the team wins. Uh, I built one for the Bellarmine sports team, and it actually got run over by an SUV from the opposing team. My goodness. Intentionally, yeah. I take it. Intentionally. Fortunately, there was nobody in mm. there, and they brought it over, and we were able to get it repaired and back out there again. That's fabulous. All right, well, Dennis is going to show us his stuff, and we're going to watch The Wasp Woman. Have you seen this one? Oh, yeah, when I was a kid. You know, I've seen it as well, and we did this whole diatribe at the beginning about bees and wasps and how wasps are not the kind of bees that we like. But, uh, you know, this movie, we've gotten complaints about for some reason, so I'm having really? trouble remembering why, but we're uh, going to watch it tonight and find out why we got so many complaints about this film. But uh, the write-up was okay? Everything was good? Oh, it was great here at Bodega Bay. Good. Wow, this good. terrific, terrific no, mansion. You, know, you chose a, a good day to come. Thank you. I saw the uh, the sign saying, don't feed the seagulls. Well, you know, we've had a problem with seagulls out here. Yeah, I've heard yeah, that. I've heard that no, you've had problems no. with birds and well, all that. You know, I, I don't <laughs> mind them. And, you know, Tangella feeds them. And that's why we have to put the sign up, because if you feed more of them, it's not that, like, we don't want to feed them. They'll get fat. Oh, so, well, there you go. Tangella's already feeding them. All right. Well, we're going to start this film. And when we come back, we're going to see one of your first and most amazing creations. But first, let's start with the Wasp Woman. You guys stay with us. Don't go away, please.
bump is not going to hurt you one bit. Just relax and sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. And in the morning, you'll find yourselves in your new home. Hey, my pitch. <laughs> running at the front office. Smooth as honey, Renfro. <laughs> I see here you turned in over a thousand pounds of orange blossom honey and 400 of beeswax last month, Renfro. Congratulations. You've made the top of the list again. Thank you, sir. Well, they honey needs your kind of man, Renfro. You stay with it, and I can see a bright future for you with the company. Well, I do try to do my best, Mr. Barker. I try to take my inspiration from the bees. Always busy, busy, busy. Yes. Now, uh, what about this fellow, Dr. Zinthrop? Zinthrop? <laughs> Boy, there's a nut. Him and his bees. You know, it wouldn't surprise me someday to see him flapping his arms, taking off after some queen bee with the rest of the drones. Mm hmm? Well, he's paid to do research on royal jelly. Haven't had a progress report from him in a month. Hmm. Well, he has a little workshop up there back of the orange grove. Keeps a few colonies. I suppose I'd better go up there and take a look. Hey, you! Where's this fellow Zinth from? Oh, he's up where the extractor is, up there. Huh. Hey, hey. This isn't a honeybee. These are wasps. Wasps? Who's responsible for this? Most likely Dr. Zinth, sir. I told you it was a crackpot. Zinth, huh? Ah. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com.
Welcome back to Creature Features. I am still with Mr. Dennis Lancaster, and we've been joined by Gamera. Oh my goodness. He's going to ruin my newly waxed floors. All right, well, before we get to Gamera, let's talk about this film. This whole doing cosmetics with wasps. Yeah, how about that? She's you, wearing the glasses and she's old looking. No, well, you know, <laughs> wasps are actually ants with wings. They're not bees, right? Right. No, it's a true story. I looked it up on Wikipedia. Have you seen this? It's a thing on the internet. You could look things up. Yeah, how about that? All right. Anyways, we're going to see what happened next. But uh, you made this. You yes, created this. Yes, back, I, not, back. not the chap inside, but the, the outer part of this chap. The, the mascot, yes. Back in, back in 95. 1995. This, it looks brand new. The suits lasted this, this long, which is why folks uh, hire intermission productions to make their mascots. Yeah. Should we mention that Mr. Eric Yee is inside of this? Not only that, but Mr. Eric Yee also airbrushed this costume. In fact, no. he airbrushes all our costumes. Oh. They look fantastic. So the foam does not come from the factory in with the coloring like this? No, they have to be painted. No. That be makes painted. sense. That makes sense. That's absolutely wonderful. So where has this costume appeared before? Uh, it did the opening for Gamera 3. It's traveled to several film festivals, several conventions. A friend of mine used him at Monster Palooza, I think the last three oh times goodness. it went together. He's getting kind of old and uh, worn That's down, but we, we, fabulous costume. we love him. Thank you. We've got a number of, of monster costumes we enjoy. We have a Godzilla mascot suit that we still use, and it's getting close to 30 years old. 30 years old. We have a 15-foot-long Mothra costume. Uh, currently, I'm working on a Titanicus suit for a uh, kaiju monster toy maker. Now, what is Titanicus? He is a Godzilla-like monster with icebergs sticking out his, his back. Oh, yeah. that's important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's pretty impressive Icebergs character. make wonderful weapons if you're a giant monster. Exactly. Well, well that's, why the that's why the Titanic went down. So yeah. how, how long <laughs> could a bloke stay inside a costume like this before he dies? Uh, it depends if they have a cold vest or they're oh. really wanting to do it. I so remember back in the vest. day. Yeah. And what's that got? Like a it's got ice ice blocks all around you and keeps your your oh chest cold. And wow. then if you chill the blood, you know your body stays nice and cold. Oh. You have so to, you so have to want like, to do it. It's like cryonics <laughs> and cosplay mixed together. Exactly. That's incredible. Exactly. So how long? How much time did you spend building this? Oh, I was young back then and more right. ambitious, so I think it took a, a little bit over a month to a month to so put it 30 together. Thirty days, like eight hours a day. Yeah, uh, more like sixteen. Sixteen. <laughs> Who hours needs sleep? A day. My goodness. Um, we've built mass hundreds of mascots through the years for uh, Fry's Electronics. We built all the Charlie Chips. In fact, we did a creature from the Black Lagoon. Charlie Chip, which Eric did a wow. beautiful job painting. And what's, what's a Charlie Chip? Charlie Chip was the mascot for, or is the mascot for Fry's Electronics. Oh, and it's right. a chip-like character and little computer, old-time computer right, chips. Right. And they wanted different costumes for Charlie, so he's wearing tuxedos, oh, nice. he's wearing pilot's outfit. It depends on the the store that Charlie appears at. Right. And there was one that was an aquarium, so we said, "Can we do a creature from the Black Lagoon?" And Eric oh, did fabulous. just a magnificent paint job. Well, I bet he did. Now we're known for cyclones. Now we're cyclone. known for building cyclone mascots. So we've built a number of cyclones that have been shipped all over the, That's the nation. That's incredible. All right, well, I'm getting the signal. We've got to get back to this film. But when we come back, we're going to see some other fantastic creation from Mr. Dennis Lancaster, right? you got other stuff to show us. Yep, we have some fun stuff to talk all about. All right, we'll be right back. Uh, camera will not be, but uh, we will see you soon. Stay with us. and a young dog. All right, so what? Well, they're exactly the same age. 
You see, the little one, Greta, has been given regular injections of my compound from the Queen Wasp. Just like I told you, Mr. Barker. Now look here, Zentrop. Fit in. Somewhere. find a home somehow, somewhere. Oh, but you sound impatient. I know, it's your babies, huh? They're hungry and uh, they must be fed. Uh, now, now, how would you like a nice, juicy little caterpillar, huh? Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? There. Now, you must eat them. Be strong because, well, a lot of work to do together. Yes, sir. A lot of work. As you can see, gentlemen, sales for the last fiscal quarter have dropped. Fourteen and one half percent. There's not been a corresponding drop in our competitor sales. I trust one of you gentlemen has a satisfactory explanation for this decline. Not one little suggestion, gentlemen. We'll start with you, Thompson. As public relations manager, no doubt you have some faint glimmering of what's happening to Stalin products. Well, Thompson? Well, you see, I, uh... I had no idea you were such an excellent public speaker, Thompson. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Darlin. I guess I'm not feeling very well this morning. I'm sorry you aren't. I think I can tell you why Stalin products are falling off so badly, Miss Stalin. We're listening, Lane. Where would you put the responsibility for this decline? On you, Miss Stalin. I imagine you... have arguments to support that contention. We've all been looking at it for the past 20 minutes. The most convincing argument is right on that graph. May I show you? Thank you. Now, right here in April is when Stalin sales started falling off. Very clever of you, Lane. Would you mind waiting until I finish, Miss Stalin? That's enough, Lane. Relax, Willis. My apologies for the interruption. Thank you. Now, as I said, sales began to fall in April. But the reason for the fall was back here in February. Now, the Stalin products have always been thought of as something of a, a modern miracle in the cosmetics trade. A firm built to a multi-million dollar a year business on the strength and appeal of, of one person, Janice Stalin. From the beginning right through until February of this year, only one woman's face was used to advertise those products. Your face, Miss Stalin. The public have come to accept you as a, as a symbol. Well, now, after 16 years, they see a different face. They, they don't trust it. They feel cheated. The simple fact is that Stalin Cosmetics should have Janice Stalin's picture advertising them. Well, that's about all I've got to say. And a darn good job of saying it, too. I agree. Uh, Lane makes a lot of sense on that score, Miss Stalin. I think I've had enough flattery for one morning, gentlemen. It's a very convincing argument, Lane. There's a Mr. Simpson to see Mr. Starling. There's only one small fact we've yeah. overlooked. Not even Janice Starlin can remain a glamour girl forever. Miss Starlin? Yes, Mary. There's a Mr. Zinthrop in reception. He says he has an appointment. Thank you. Huh? It's been a very informative get-together. It'll be all for now. Take it easy, 
Something on your mind, Miss Dolan? You've done some work on royal jelly, haven't you? Oh, a little. Are there any real therapeutic values in it? Oh, I'd say so. Of course, uh, a lot depends on each individual's reaction to the stuff. What do you mean? It's just that no two people react in precisely the same way. One man's meat's another man's poison. Oh. But you think royal jelly can be beneficial in some cases. Queen Bee said a lot of stuff about it. I'll accept that as an affirmative answer. Supposing a more powerful form of royal jelly could be obtained. From the Queen Wasp, for example. I mean, well, do you suppose that might have some rejuvenating effect on a human being? I'd stay away from wasps if I were you, Miss Dolan. Socially, the Queen Wasp is on a level with a black widow spider. They're both carnivorous. They paralyze their victims and then take their time devouring them alive. They kill their mates in the same way, too. Strictly a one-sided romance. Well, uh, I'm not exactly interested in, in the love life of the Queen Wasp. I want your opinion on the possibilities of using enzyme extracts from royal wasp jelly, commercially. Well, if you want an honest opinion, Miss Stone... Of course I want an honest opinion. And my advice is forget about it. Thank you, Arthur. Any time, Miss Dolan. I have Mr. Zinthrop come in. Yes, Miss Darling. Uh, you can go in out there. Time, Mr. Kendrick. But it is I who give you the time, Miss Darling. Oh, yes. Plenty of time I give you. Ten, maybe fifteen years I give you. I want you to understand one thing very clearly, Mr. Zentrum. I expect absolute proof of what you claim in your letter. Tangible proof, not words. <laughs> Such proof you shall get, madam. And more. But I think i better show you in the laboratory, yes? This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Feature. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. Mr. Lancaster stepped away to, I think he went to get something. More than likely. More than likely. You know, he has stuff, so he has to go get more stuff. Because we can't have all the stuff out here. Especially with Tangella and her octopi. How are you, love? She's got the big one out again. I'm concerned. You know, she has so many of those things. You know, people are starting to send them to her now. Mm. Octopi, of all things. You know, we live in Bodega Bay, and we have a full access to octopi. All we've got to do is walk down to the ocean, and she can scoop one up. Right? I think she likes the plush ones. Anyways, we're going to do letters because that's uh, what we're supposed to do, right? Indeed. Can I have a letter? And how are you, Mr. Livingston? I don't know. Can you? May I, yes. school mom? All right. First letter of the evening is from somebody named India Berry. 
from Houston, Texas. That's a wonderful name. Hmm. India Berry. There could be a lovely dessert as well, right? Right. All right. Hi, guys. Antangela. I'm from Houston, Texas area, and I grew up on horror movies. I saw a few cool older movies with my mom, but when I found you guys on Facebook, I absolutely flipped. That's, you know, people don't flip enough about our show. They like, they flip out sometimes, but they don't flip. Uh. I adore your show and watch almost every day. You know, you should go out and do something fun, India. Uh, thanks for the entertainment. Keep up the awesome work. I would love to see Village of the Damned or Children of the Damned. If you guys can get those films, please give me a shout out. Um, you know, she likes damn films. Indeed. You know, we'll, we'll see what we can do on those, but it sounds like they are like difficult ones to get, but we'll try. India, thanks for writing. I hope everything's nice in Texas. Next up, Mr. Livingston. Something uh, local. Oh, this is from Rick Foley. You remember Rick? I do not. Rick writes to us all the time. I always like say he's like the guy who did, uh, you know, the audio work on films. Foley. Uh, oh, that joke. Him. All right, Rick. He says, uh, hi, Vincent Livingston and Tangela. Just a quick word of praise on keeping us entertained every Saturday night. I enjoy Vincent Livingston's periodic back and forth insults, and especially Tangela's mischievous behavior during the beginning monologue. She's actually pretty well behaved tonight. She is so cute. I thought of a really bad movie that might fit right in. It is Bean from Another Planet. It might be cheap enough to pull off. Bean from Another Planet. So does that mean a like bean, or is it like bean from Another Planet? I'm not sure where you're going with this. Well, it could be a bean, or he's just talking about being from another planet. Ah. Uh, you know, the verb or the noun, I, right? Yes. I don't know. All right. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Thanks for writing, Rick. And one more letter. We're only doing three tonight. We need to yes. do more. Oh, this is a long one. All right. This one is from Brent Melchek in Westwood, California. We used to live right across... From Westwood. That's where all the trouble began. No, it's right across the 405 from Brentwood. Yes. Where we lived. We could like just go over the other pass and we'd be in Westwood. So it's a neighbor. It's an old neighbor writing. Dear Creature Feature Producers. Uh, this isn't for me. I think the producers wanted you to see that one. Oh, all right. As a former producer myself, specializing in reality television, I thought I would send you a quick note giving you my opinion of your show. It's terrible. How can you broadcast such drivel is well beyond my comprehension. I can see why you're not on any major networks. This show would never fly in Los Angeles. The broadcasters here, as well as in New York, are far too sophisticated to foist such mediocrity on their masses. Well, it's a rather unkind review. You obviously have some decent production skills. Maybe you guys should be doing a cooking show instead. Oh, can you imagine if we did a cooking show? No. No, we could do a cooking show with Tangella, where oh. Tangella cooks things. What, what would you cook? Octopi? No? No, you know, I think, I think she would do a vegetable cooking show, because she eats vegetables, like mushrooms. You like mushrooms, right? But you know, some people have mushrooms as pets. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, Brent, I, you know, I don't know how to respond to this. Um, some wonderful TV stations carry us, so, you know, we're not that bad. But uh, reality television, that's a, that's a noble pursuit, sir. One person's opinion. That's right. Is that it for letters? That's it. All right. If you'd like to send us a letter, you would use the email address you see appearing down on this portion of your screen. Or if you'd like to send something in the post, send it to the address you see appearing on this portion of your screen. We're going to be right back with Mr. Lancaster in a moment. But first, let's get back to the Wasp Woman. They look terrible. Why don't you put them out of their misery? Madame, you ask for proof? Please be kind enough to look at proof you ask for. May I proceed? Thank you. Thank you. 
In a few minutes, madame, you shall see a miracle you shall not believe. Oh, no tricks. <laughs> you may look if you like. I have no tricks. Well, don't look at me. <laughs> I'm not changing. believe one animal, so I bring two. I, uh, I show you again? Yes? Yes, I must be sure. Yes, madam. have a laboratory equipped with everything I need for my research. If we're successful, well, I ask for a little percentage. But I must get full credit for my discovery that is most important to me. I'll have Gordon draw up the contracts. Oh, contracts, contracts, I do not need to give me your word. Good enough, Rick. You amaze me. Frankly, when I received your letter, I thought you were just a, another eccentric. But there's always a chance you might not be. Then you walk in here and show me nothing short of a miracle. Two miracles. And you say that you'll accept my word that I won't cheat you. You won't. I know you're a good woman, even if you do not like other people to know it. However, uh, my formula may not be good for human beings. I have not tested yet. You will on me. Oh, no, 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 no. There might be danger. Those are my terms, Mr. Sintra. Janice Starlin will be your next guinea pig. Very well. Though it may take a little time to prepare sufficient extract, a week, maybe more. I'll make whatever arrangements you may need for your equipment. Thank you, madam. Now I see how you built all this. <laughs> I'm very close to losing it, Mr. Sintra. Maybe... Working together, we can save Janice Darlin Enterprises. Maybe even make it bigger than ever before. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm sure the next three months we'll see a rise in Starlin sales that will surpass anything we've dared imagine. Mr. Zinthrop is working on the final stages of a development that will revolutionize the cosmetic industry. He's to have a free hand in his experiments it will be answerable to no one but myself. At the moment, I cannot divulge the nature of Mr. Zinthrop's experiments, but I can assure you it will bring worldwide recognition to Janice Darwin Enterprises. <laughs> you think Zinthrop really isn't on the level? After all, we don't even know what he's working on. It could be very legitimate. Oh, you're as bad as she is. Oh, women. <laughs> Men. 
Every time you're stuck for an answer, you always come up with women. But you're not getting out of this one so easily. I'd like to know why you think Zintrup really hasn't got something. Well, you can call it male intuition if you like. It's just that there's something about this whole business that doesn't smell right. The private laboratory, the secret experiment, Zintrup himself. The only thing that's missing is a genie with a lamp. You better leave the intuition to me. Come on, I'll let you buy me dinner. Buy you dinner? What's happened to your sporting blood? I thought we were going to toss for the check. Oh, no. You won the last three times. All right, look, I'll make a deal with you. Dinner is on me if you promise to keep an eye on what goes on in there. Well, what do you want me to do? Read her mail and send her messages and keep her clothes? You could do worse. Oh, no, Mr. Cooper, not you, too. I've been trying to tell Bright Eyes here that I think Zentrop is a phony and a confidence man. If I were sure of that, I wouldn't be worried. I think he's a lot more dangerous. A quack. Well, I don't follow you, Coop. Well, a confidence man would just be interested in your money. The only damage they can do is to your pocketbook. A quack can be fatal. <laughs> I'm getting sick of the TV every night. I mean, you know, we can do the same thing in a nightclub. Well, almost. Good morning. Janice Darlin Enterprises. I got two words for you. Drop dead. Twice. Irving, calls me to tell me Dr. Cyclops is on Channel 9 tonight. Crushed. You've seen it twice already. Good morning. Is, uh, is Miss Darling in her office now? Hmm? Oh, Miss Darling's in conference. Would you like to speak to her secretary? Oh, no, no, no. Just say to Miss Darling, I should like to see her when she has time. Huh? Yes. Else, Mr. Zinter? No, 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 no. Goodbye. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. show we are still with mr dennis lancaster you know i was telling him he looks like gene roddenberry back when he <laughs> made star trek no you do you could you should like cosplay gene roddenberry. there you go right, right. or mr magoo or something mr. no, no, no. <laughs> By all George. right let's talk about this film um uh, the wasp woman it reminds me of the fly that it does that it does but it's it's like very fly like True, it's and like then the very next thinking. year they all virtually remade it at Universal, The Leech Woman. So the Leech Woman, we have to show the Leech Woman one day. Livingston, can you find that? Very well. All right, see, he's good at finding films. All right, what in God's name is this? This is Blobulous. Blobulous. And he was part of oh. our haunted houses. The Intermission Productions did over sixty haunted houses through so the years. So this is not from a film. Nope, it was a puppet Ooh. we used to uh, spook people. We did a family-friendly style haunted house that right. was still scary. And we did over 60 of them. Uh, we just- So what, what do we have in here? Uh, like a little person, like a, a dwarf? Oh, oh, no, look, look, he's, he's large, he's large. All right, well, Mr. Eyeball, you're blocking my camera. So why don't you come over here, over on this side? He's, 
He's a camera hog. And he's he's house, like Tangela. And he's housebroken, too. Oh, he's well, housebroken. Well, well, sorry about yeah, that on the looks, floor. but uh, amazing. You know? Oh, he's, it, this is like, you know, something you'd see in like an inappropriate adult film. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. And uh, I love the eye. I love the eye. All right. Well, this is a rated cheese show, so we can't not go Family down friendly this, show. this dirt road. All right, so you built this, and this was much quicker to make, I imagine. Oh, it was much, it was much quicker to make, but it's sure a lot of fun. And Come on over on this side where we can see you. Hard to believe it's 30 years old. There we go. It's, it's 30 years old, sporting an Eric E. paint it, job, and we used it in our oh, haunted it's houses. it's Eric E. again, isn't it? Eric E. paints oh everything. You know, Eric E. is in a lot of costumes you see on this show for some reason. That he is. Yeah, that... That is something that would be appropriate in a haunted house. Oh. All right, so you're telling me you do haunted house we, things. We did haunted houses for right. over 60 of them. We just recently retired, and now we work at Deloso Family Farms. My wife designed a pirate show. And that's located where? Uh, it's in Lathrop, near Tracy and Stockton. Right, so if you're driving, is it 29 or 5? Or 205, on to 5, you'll, you'll see five, it right, right. right to the left, and the pirate show is a whole lot of fun. So you're still doing this even oh, yeah. this yeah. year? Yeah, right. we're are doing our fourth year this coming October. That's a lot of work to do something like that, isn't it? Oh, it is, building the sets. And again, we have puppets, giant-sized puppets during it. So during this pirate show, the uh, kids are able to battle the Kraken. The Kraken actually reaches up over the, the set. Right. And this painful uh, eye-looking eye creature looks down at them. And then they have to walk the plank uh, in front of the great white shark. That sounds which fantastic. Is, and it, it's right. fun. You know, you better get me some tickets for that. Because I know Tangela's going to see you there. Go. I'd love she to see all of you there. All right. Well, uh, let's get back to the Wasp Woman. When we come back, you're going to show us something else, right? Yes. More stuff coming from Mr. Dennis Lancaster and maybe Mr. Eric Yi, Bubble Man. We'll be back soon. Stay with us. Good morning, Miss Darling. Good morning. Good morning. I couldn't get away any sooner. Is it important? Miss Darling, do you remember the big cat I showed you last week? No. What about it? Well, I want you to look at him. Come. No. Quite a difference, yes? has carte blanche to order anything he requires. It is no concern of yours, Gleason. Make out a check of the full amount. Sue? Mary. Can I talk to Mr. Lane a Bill? Hey, listen. 
Gleason just got a bill for $2,300. Zinthrop. Enzyme extracts. making progress. There's great improvement in the tissue. Why is it taking so long? It's the third week. <laughs> you forget, my dear, there's more to you than a little kitten, huh? Besides, there's a difference in metabolism. Why not increase the dosage? Wouldn't that step up the process? Patience, my dear, patience. We must tread lightly and with care, Your Honor. <laughs> Concentrate solution of the enzymes. Oh, a great deal more powerful than the solution I've been using in your injection. Oh? Yes. And I think, I think it will be better for lotions. As an emollient lotion, it'll make estrogenic creams and all such products old-fashioned. My dear, Stalin will be world famous, bringing you to millions. You're right, Sintra. There are going to be a few red faces in my advertising department. But I am right. Why, your own mirror will tell you that I am right. Why, you look at least five years younger than you looked three weeks ago. <laughs> I know. It's a very capable confidence man, from what I read in this letter. He claims he can stimulate the processes of rejuvenation through the use of enzymes extracted from wasps. Oh, for... Well, what are you two Sherlock's going to do about it? Right now, I don't know. Frankly, I'm getting tired of the whole business. That woman's so intent on holding back time, she's ready to fall for the first phony line she hears. Wasps. Phil! Face the facts. Mary Janice Starlin has built her whole life on youth and beauty. Now that she's losing them, she's scared to death. But right now, she's on cloud nine with that quack Zenthrop that I'd hate to be around when she comes back down to Earth. Well, maybe we can let her down easy. I think we owe her that much. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do? We can't just let Zenthrop build up her hopes and then knock the props out from under her. How can he do such a terrible thing? Poor Jan. There must be something we can do before it's too late. He's got a mighty convincing argument. Very impressive to the layman. Ten to one, he's got a record just as impressive. There are ways to find out. The answer might be right here in our hands. Ted. I'm going to keep this letter for a day or two. Wait a minute. Suppose she finds out it's gone. I'm the only one with access to that desk. She'll know I took it. Well, that's a chance you have to take, Mary. I think we can be pretty sure that Coop knows what he's doing, huh? Well, come on, young lovers.
This is Lynette from Munns Park, Arizona. Love your show. Wish we could have Dracula movies. Bye. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by... The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Sesame Street. We are with Dennis Lancaster and his creations. My goodness, you know, these are, between the three of these, <laughs> I th I'm feeling outnumbered. I, I think we should sing a song about ABCs or something. There you go. Believe it or not, these characters are from our Christmas show. You use the Halloween characters. The Halloween for the Christmas show. We do Andy and Jeff Save Christmas during the Christmas season. And this is Count Wolfbane, and this is Igor. And so the Count is upset because... Halloween seems to be getting pushed out of the way for Christmas sooner oh. and sooner. Yeah, that's right. They have Halloween at the end cap mark, 70% off. Two weeks before Halloween even comes. What's going on here? I, I know. I, I know, love I know, that the Dracula creature has a Russian accent. There you go. It's nice. Yes. It's very nice. Um, later on, we actually built full-size mascots of these characters, and they actually do the the show that way, but occasionally we have to do a library, library or a smaller, right, smaller place, and so we so do the the puppets. the puppets exactly. And through the years, the intermission productions. Well, you is know, done. he reminds me of Count Chocula. There, there you go. Count Chocula is wonderful. With the All Bob right. McFadden voice. Let's talk about the film for a moment. So, uh, the lab rats, they're going to try to create makeup out of lab rats. Is that the way it works in real life? In this film, it does. Uh, see, Igor would know. Figures Igor would know. So this is a show you're still doing as well? Yes, we still do this show. And we, what's it called? Uh, Andy and Jeff Save Christmas. Right. We also have done for year, uh, t over 20 years the Dangerous Dino Show, which was an anti-drug show. And it also featured Andy and Jeff and space aliens teaching ecology. So it, it, it's been a nice run with these characters. Oh, that's wonderful. And, you know, I, I noticed anybody who has a puppet on this show can do wonderful voices as well. He was doing several during the film that was like, do, what are the, some of the other ones you were doing? Hey, what's up, Doc? Great horny toads, you long-eared galoot. See, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. And of course, this guy's not saying the thing. He's just out. He keeps giving, he keeps giving me the evil lie. Oh, my goodness. 
All right, well, what do you think? Should we get back to this film? Yes, we must get back to the Vast Woman. Let's do it. All right, we're going to get back to uh, the Vast Woman right about now. It is you, Miss Todd. Of course it's me. Who did you think it was? Well, you, you look so different. Finish your nails. Maureen. Hmm? I think your phone is ringing. Oh. Yes, Miss Darlin. Good morning. Janice Darlin Enterprises. Gentlemen, Janice Darlin Enterprises is about to start on the most widespread publicity campaign in the history of the cosmetic industry. Our slogan will be, Return to Youth with Janice Darlin. When this is in arrives, there will be a press interview and all questions regarding the rejuvenation process will be referred to him. That will be all for now, gentlemen. It's amazing. Why, it's wonderful. You look marvelous. I said that will be all for now, gentlemen. Good morning. Oh, not you, Mary. Wait a moment, please. Yes, Miss Darling. Mary, isn't it wonderful? It's a miracle. A wonderful, incredible miracle. We were so worried about you. We really thought you were in danger. <laughs> we even went to plotting how to, how to rescue you from Mr. Zentrup. <laughs> it all seems so silly. It seems ridiculous. Oh, Mary. Mary, how old do I look? Tell me. How old? How old do I look? Tell me. Twenty-three, maybe twenty-two. Tw That's how old I was when I started Janice Starlin Enterprises. Do you realize what that means? I'm back where I started, eighteen years ago, with what it took eighteen years to accomplish. It's like a dream. <laughs>
given me very much to go on. No home address, no former employer, no phone. This is just like starting from scratch. Mr. Zentrop wasn't a, a conventional employee. He didn't go through regular personnel. Uh-huh. You say he came here about a month ago. Well, how did he come here, Miss Starlin? He just didn't walk in off the street, did he? The letter. Right here in my drawer. Maybe uh, one of the other drawers. So that's what she meant. What who meant? Miss Starlin. The letter's been taken and you think you know who took it, is that right? My secretary, Miss Dennison. You got her address handy? The phone number. It might be better if I busted in on her cold. This way, she'll have a chance to prepare a story. I know what I'm doing. All right. Mary, Janice, darling. Before I went to lunch, I made a duplicate copy of Mr. Zendrup's letter. I was going to take that one to Bill and Mr. Cooper at first, but then I thought that the original would be better. Have you got the copy? Yes, it's in my desk. Get that copy, Miss Tennyson. Uh-huh. 946 West 73rd Street, Manhattan. Yeah, that's right. Get right on it, Jerry, and check back with me as soon as you can.
Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. I wanted you to know that um, Vince had me take your uh, guillotine off to the dump, and I enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh. You're sure he's our boy? Uh-huh. Is he? Central emergency. Mm hmm Right. Well, it looks like we've got him. This is John Doe down at Central Emergency, auto accident. There's no identification on him, but he was wearing a lab smock and Phil Zinthrope's description. Mary, get my coat and Lane, get a cab downstairs. You badly hurt? Head injury, general contusions of the body. He's had a severe injury and there's definite brain damage. Just how much, we can't tell as yet. How long before you'll know? It's hard to say, Miss Darling. Who's the best man for this kind of injury? Well, there are several top specialists. Get the best. I'll take full responsibility for the expenses. Yes, Miss Darling. I don't know, Arthur. I think it best we wait. But it's been three days since the accident, Jan. And no sign of improvement. He's still in a coma. You heard what the doctor said. He may never regain consciousness. And even if he does, who knows how badly his brain has been damaged. Well, I'll give it another 48 hours. He doesn't regain consciousness by then. Now you can take over the laboratory, Arthur. Janet. It's my decision. I want this to be the biggest advertisement. 
advertising campaign in the history of cosmetic advertising. Every newspaper and magazine in the country will be flooded with our new slogan, Return to Youth with Janice Darling. Excuse me, uh, Miss Darling. What is it, Thompson? Well, I think we should be a little conservative, Miss Darling. Uh, cosmetics are one thing, medications another. We're liable to run into trouble. Yes. Advertising copy will be cleared through your office. Well, it's a touchy business, you know. Max is right, Miss Starlin. You don't have to second the motion, May. I want one thing understood very clearly now, gentlemen. Janice Starlin Enterprises is going to bring the most fantastically saleable product ever developed by Modern Cosmetics to the public. And I don't intend to be restricted by timidity on the part of my own staff. Is that clear? Are you all right, Miss Tarlin? Just a, just a little headache, Mary. I'm fine. Can I get you something? I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you. I have some aspirin in my purse. It's all right, Mary. Well, that'll be all for now, Jen. It's Stalin for us to crack up that new stuff. Imagine being 18 again. I guess if it can take 15 years off Stalin, it can take 10 off you. What do you mean, 10? Face it, honey. This is Maureen you're talking to. Yeah? Well, if I were you, I'd take a double dose. Then maybe Irving wouldn't watch television so much. So who says he looks at it? I can't imagine what else he does. Three guesses. Say, did Cooper come in yet? Mm-mm. Missed a board meeting this morning. I bet Starlin's having a fit. He should worry. Uh-oh. See you later. Bye, honey. Hi, pretty puss. You know where, um, Miss Starlin's office is? Sweet number one. <laughs> La dee da, the Duchess of Flatbush herself. How'd you like to have this phone wrapped around your ear, wise guy? It's more like it, sister. Sweet number one. Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are still watching The Wasp Woman with Mr. Dennis Lancaster. And we've got two surprise guests. You might remember these two blokes. Right? See, there you do go. the voice. He, he does the voice. Okay. Uh, we're watching The Wasp Woman here on Creature Features. Peaky boo. See that? Hey, you do the voice perfectly. <laughs> Thank now, you. you know, I was not around this country when these two were on but uh, there, there's been a lot of like a lot of nostalgia royalty for them. and nostalgia and these were exactly. like a big thing well pat mccormick was a magnificent puppeteer right. and he truly created characters i built these tribute puppets um it was easier than me walking around in a cosplay costume and the response was tremendous and oh i bet people stop you on the streets not only that a lot of big guys started crying this was my childhood and just you know, well, this horse balling. has the best nostrils I've ever seen on a horse. Right? 
Well, even, what's what's funny about it? noises as well. What's funny about it is Shafton created the puppets for Pat. Right. These are obviously are, are copies, but uh, back then Ollie the Dragon and Cecil the Sea Six Sea Serpent had those little round nostrils. Oh right. So and just... originally Charlie was supposed to be a dragon. Oh, it sounds and like a dragon's name. There you go. And so um, they. Disney decided not to go with the show, and Pat McCormick had it turned into a, a horse. How fabulous. And the dog, what kind of dog is this? It's a little bulldog. He looks like a little bulldog. Do, do the voice, do the voice. Well, I didn't think he would, he would bother me, mind me borrowing his, his lamp, Pat's lamp, his priceless antique lamp. <laughs> No, remember, I'm no in the borrowing. middle of this mess. <laughs> All right, so you brought some related yes, products. Yes, I, I got a call. I got Show a, me this. I want to look. Here you go. I got a call from two very talented comic book artists, John oh, Hegman it's and Paul. Justin Sane. Paul Wilkins. There you go. They, these two talented comic book artists sought me out and says, hey, we're oh, doing a is... licensed comic book based on Pat's characters. Look, and it even says creature feature. Right there. There you go. And they're wow. just wonderful comics. They oh, look, really capture. It has, it has Bob as, as uh, what was his character called? Captain Cosmic. Captain Cosmic. Captain Cosmic. I should Cosmic. know this. This is a great cross. The guys did a great job. So, you know, uh, Bob's widow, Sally, came on the show, and she brought this part of this costume, the top of Captain Cosmic. Oh, Captain we Cosmic. had it right here. That's fantastic. And now we've got Charlie and Humphrey. This is like we're going full circle here. Well, this is absolutely fa fantastic, and there's several issues of this, right? There's several, and a, a big issue coming out that's going to be released. So, a big uh, issue meaning large or thick? Uh, or? Uh, their full official issue coming out. They basically right. did these test test comics, but uh, check for the information on uh, Charlie and Humphrey Comics. Wonderful. And. Uh, the guys did a great job. Yeah, it's just no, a wonderful obviously. job. Obviously, and you did a wonderful job on these puppets. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Well, let's get back to the film, and when we come back, we're going to find out what you're doing next, right? All right. Off we go. Back to the Wasp Woman. Are you guys ready for this? Off we go. Hey. Miss Darling. Oh, what is it, Mary? Is there anything I can do? Yes, is, uh, is Mr. Thinthrop's room ready? Oh, uh-huh. The nurse is fixing the emergency equipment now, and the ambulance is due any minute. Well, be sure to let me know when it arrives. Oh, Mary, please, before you go, could you see if you could work that thing? Oh, sure. I've seen lots of these. We've had a room especially made over for you, Mr. Zintrup, and Miss Warren has a room adjoining yours, so there'll be someone near you at all times. Thank you. Thank you. When you're feeling better, Mr. Zintrup, there are a few things I'd like to discuss with you. Good, good. Conscientious guy, honey. If he felt sick or something, he'd have called in. Relax. He'll probably be in bright and chipper in there. Interrupting something? Oh, uh, we were just having a little coffee clutch, Miss Starlin. We were talking about Mr. Cooper. What about Mr. Cooper? Well, about his missing the meeting this morning. Nobody's been able to reach him all day. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Mr. Cooper's been here a long time. Probably feels he's entitled to take a day for himself now and then. 
That's what I've been trying to tell Mr. Lane. Oh, by the way, Miss Stalin, how is Mr. Zinthrop? Oh, fine. In a few days, we'll uh, start the layoffs for the campaign. Oh, I'm ready when you are, boss. Look this over. Hey, Bill. Huh? Don't go get any ideas about the boss. For me? Don't be silly. I just wanted to know that I'm an eager member of the team. Still, she is looking a lot younger these days, isn't she? You think Zinthrop would give you any of those treatments? You know, break the watch or something? Mm -hmm. Mr. Green, that personnel is his responsibility. I have other things to think about than worrying whether the night watchman walked off the job. Well, that's just it, Miss Darlin. Mr. Green feels that the watchman never left the building. His lunch pail and his raincoat are still in the basement. I don't want to hear anything more about it, Mary. All right, Miss Darlin. Will you see? Where she heard a scream from one of the other floors. Zinthra heard it too, but she convinced Timmy was having a bad dream. Oh, maybe they both were. That's not funny anymore, Mary. There's something going on in that building. And I'm going to find out what it is. How? Have a look around Cooper's lab, for one thing. After that, I don't know. Hold it steady. Bill, this is crazy. We can really get in trouble. I won't hire him tomorrow, but it is important. All right, Mr. Arlen, I'll be in my room. Sinfrog. Sinfrog, you've got to help me. Something's happening. Something's happening to me. I can't control it. There is something I must remember, but I, I can't. Try to think. The wasp enzymes. The, the extracts you, you were experimenting with before the accident. Try to think. <laughs> well, this is Zentrop's notebook, Mary. Notes on his experiments with Jan. Well, how did Cooper get hold of it? I don't know. If only Cooper would show up. Mary, look. It's Mr. Cooper's pipe. Well, don't you get it? He's going to go out without his pants and leave that pipe behind. He's still somewhere in the building. I bet a year's salary on it. If he is, he... He's dead. And the night watchman. There's only enough left for one more injection. One more. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. 
not now. Stay tuned. Hairstyling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Behind all this, it's him. Mr. Zinthrop. Bill. Look at I'm Bill Lane, and this is Miss Dennison, Miss Starlin's secretary. Miss Starlin? The cat? What about a cat? Must warn her. Injections. Must not take any more injections. Is Miss Starlin in danger? Terrible danger. I, I was... Take it easy, Mr. Uh, Center, if you're still pretty weak. Mary, see if you can get Jan on the phone. All right. All right. <laughs> No answer. Oh, Miss Darlin? Is that you, Mary? Where are you? We're in the building. We're in Mr. Zittrup's room. Something's happened down here. Let me talk to her. Hello, Miss Darlin. This is Lane. Why are you and Mary still in the building? Oh, I was up. I don't want to get up, Mary. I was up. I can't explain now, Miss Darlin. I must. I must go. Hold on to it. I must help. You must not hold me back. Um, Don't worry, Mr. Zinthrop. We won't let anything happen to Miss Starlin. Hello. Hello, Miss Starlin. What's going on down there? Stay in your office. I'll be right up. Keep an eye on Zinthrop, honey. I'm going upstairs. Oh, no. No, no. The insect. The insect. Take it easy, Mr. Zinthrop. You do not understand. Miss Darling, she's in danger. I, I must warn. Look, I'll have to I stay must... here. You go for Jan. Oh, okay. Uh, when you get up there, call the police. You can't get outside on this phone. All right, all right, I'll They're, they're going crazy. 
Sure, Mr. Central. Now, you just relax and take it easy. Everything will be all right. We'll take care of those. You whatever do not you understand. You do not understand that girl. You shouldn't have sent her upstairs. She's in danger. You must stop her before it is too late. Okay, as soon as the cops get here, we'll oh, take Oh, you fool, you fool. Miss Darling will kill her and tear her body to shreds. Miss Darling, kill Mary? Miss Darling is not a human being any longer. The enzymes have changed her. She will destroy the girl as a female wasp would destroy her enemies and then devour the remains. Then Bill found Mr. Zinthrop's notebook in Cooper's desk. Oh, no, there's no mistake. We've got to call the police now. Now, Mary, you're just getting a little excited. Now, who could possibly want to hurt Mr. Cooper? No. But it's not only Mr. Cooper. What about... the wasp woman what a way to go she was like boom gone yeah, but it was like the fly what'd you think of the film love you know she likes it when it involves large insects or small birds she's uh, enjoying the, the whole puppet thing here yeah it's a puppet day today yeah no it's a, it's a it's quite the puppet day well yeah it's a nice film we'll show it again in two years maybe who knows but uh, anyways so what are you doing next uh 
currently I'm finishing up a mascot for the, the Kaiju uh, toy maker. Right. And we'll start preparing for Deloso Family Farms, pull out all the props and Big sets Halloween. And, you know, are you, there's these haunted houses, that you have to work on these things quite early, don't you? Oh, some people work on them all year, all My year goodness. long. Yeah, exactly. You know, people, people say that we are like Halloween all year long. Oh yeah, it's. I don't it's, quite see it. It's you so know? cool. Yeah, well, well this this is know, creature we, features. How no, cool is that? No, but we won't <laughs> allow her to do jack o' lanterns until like at least October, right? So the rest of the time it's just a moldy old home. But we show horror movies, so I guess that's close, right? Oh, it's so. It's so you're doing that. So what do you do for fun? Uh, <laughs> There's no time watch for horror, fun. Watch horror movies, cartoons. Um, I have a great grandson that we're watch. We have a great grandson that we're watching grow up now. KJ. He does not look old enough to have a great grandson. <laughs> have a great grandson. A great grandson. Great My grandson goodness. KJ. So KJ, if you're watching, hi baby. There we go. There we go. How old is he? He's she? going to be a year. One he year. is going to be a year right. in just a few days. So you're a, you've only been a great grandpa for a year, right? Just a year. Fantastic. All right, your website. How do we find out more? Intermissionproductions.com. Intermissionproductions.com. You picked a big one. Oh, there you go. Oh, and we also have a Facebook easy, really. page. And give a call. My, my beautiful wife, Cheryl, will answer the phone. And the other thing we do is we rent out Little Shop of Horror Plants. Oh, wonderful. Oh, we, those are useful. They are. Especially they are. at Halloween. There you go. That could be good, good. All right, well, thank you so much for joining thank us, you, Dennis. You were absolutely wonderful. So much fun. And uh, Eric, uh, thank you for being the guinea pig. Thanks and, for uh, lending us the boat to get oh, over the course, bay. Of course. And uh, we will hopefully have you again soon with another costume or another puppet or something like that. All right, as far as you guys go, thank you so much for watching the show. It's always fun with us, right? Isn't it? You know, most of the time she says no. But uh, next week, we're going to have a different guest, different movie. I have no idea what, but it will be fun. As always, we will see you next week. So, Dennis. Yes. You know, <laughs> this, this whole thing with you having a company that builds mascots. You know, we do conventions. And it would be nice if we could, like, have mascots of us. What do you think? <coughs> that would be interesting.